Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So we've had a great day of racing today, lots of um, impressive performances, some eye-catching performances, um, and I thought I'd do a video going over it, also talking about those horses that we've got at, maybe at the Cheltenham Festival, and also some of those that we're back today and how they got on. So the first race of the day, uh, the Sandown Novice Hurdle, I highlighted Balkia as one to um, keep an eye on. I thought he ran well. I thought he's run a good race there. Um, I said, shall we have one more? We're very, very hard to beat and, you know, won very impressively. Grandeur Dame, I'm going to say Grandeur Dame, finished second and probably just had the experience and that's what took him past um, Balkio. I wouldn't be disappointed with Balkio's performance at all um, and he's one to be interested in going forward, possibly back here for the, um, as a, a handicap final. This, is, this was the novice championship qualifier. The final back at Sandown and um, Balco could be interesting. Um, wasn't too much to talk about from that race though. The five past one at Leopardstown, a uh, great race. Manila Kakuna beat Manila Kruna. Um, I thought the eye catcher and the one to take out the race without a doubt was Manila Kruna. Was slow to out just when um, things started to get going and was go was probably just about to move into second, ended up jumping and, and was back in fifth, um, has run on really strongly for second. I think if he if he cleared the second last, he wins, or if he lands running, he wins. Um, and, you know, all systems go for the Albert Bartlett. I was very impressed with that. Uh, the extra furlong, uh, furlong and a half, two furlongs will be fine. Milana Kroon, you can see, is sevens. I actually think that's a decent price. Jinto is, is still the one to beat for me. I don't think Manila Kakuna will get an easy lead. Um, yeah, I really like Manila Kakuna. I'm very tempted to advise him for the Albert Bartlett uh, already or now. Um, that was a good run and the extra trip will suit the back up to three mile. I think Manila Kakuna should have won it anyway if he had jumped that second last. Moving on to Dolos. Great result. Tweeted this on Monday. Just tweeted hashtag Dolos. Great price in the end. Went off 10 to 1. Um, uh, I think they opened it yesterday at 7. So I saw it getting backed and going short. I was like, oh no. Ben Linfoot then tipped it up. Um, I thought it was going to go off 4. 7 to 2 sort of price. Drifted all day for some reason. Actually was 12 to 1 just before the off. Um, and then got a little bit of money. Went off 10 to 1. Yeah, Gunsight Ridge and Bundoran probably set the race up nicely. Um, but Dolos, I think he's now won this three times and finished second twice. Much lower mark this year. Um, everything was, was in his favour and hopefully some of you followed me on that one. Moving on to the Juvenile Hurdle. It's not a Triumph Hurdle trial, it's the Irish Triumph Hurdle. Um, Vauban was impressive, beating Fieldor, but I was still quite pleased with Fieldor. Um, I think he he really didn't want to go past Scenic Look, who just couldn't take him far enough. Um, ended up being almost a bit like a, a target for Vauban, and I think Ikari Len came there. And when they moved alongside, I was worried Fieldor was going to drop away. Um, he didn't. He battled, um, I think, back at Cheltenham, or at Cheltenham, stronger pace. Better horses to take him further. I still think Fieldor is going to go very close. Um, and I thought the the drift out to like eight to one. That's an overreaction. Um, I was not too disappointed with that. I still think Fieldor can reverse the tables or reverse the form with Vauban at Cheltenham. Um, and interestingly, in the last ten years, there's been six horses that won the Triumph Hurdle off the back of a win. Four horses that have been beaten. Those four horses were Far Class, who finished second in this race, Tiger Roll, who finished second in this race, Ivanovich Gorbatov, who finished fourth in this race, and Countrywide Flame, who finished third in this race. So oh, the only horses that have managed to win it without turning up, that have turned up without winning last time out, all ran in this race at Leopardstown. I thought that was quite an interesting stat. Um, and I think 8 to 1, if you can get 8 to 1, if you've got a Bet365 account. I think 8 to 1 is a great price. And I'm really sorry for my itchy nose. Um, yeah, I think 8 to 1 is a great price for, you know, that's an overreaction. Um, I think this kind of 
suggests this is where he's going to go. He's going to go to the Triumph. There's no point running the Supreme Novice. Um, and I, I think he can certainly reverse that form with Vauban. Moving on to the 150 at Sandown, it was good to see Goshen get back to winning ways. Um, beating Guard Your Dreams, it looks good on the ratings. It could be in hindsight. Um, I'm just going to pause the video very quickly. It could be in hindsight. Goshen went to Lingfield and finished third in a race worth 50 odd grand to the winner. It's a race worth targeting. I'm not sure this was. 17 to the winner. He's now won 27, 29,000 in his last two runs, which isn't, you know, bad. When he was rated 149, why didn't they look at the handicaps? Continue looking at the handicaps. Like, the Imperial Cup, there's a £100,000 prize for that. You know, I think it's 50 grand to the winner. That would have been the sort of race they could have targeted after finishing third or I just felt this was a bit of a, a pointless race to run in, in terms of prize money. Surely you, you target prize money, not just winning races. I don't know. Um, granted, you know, that's it with a bit of hindsight, but I do think these horses that are not going to be able to compete in the grade ones at the big festivals, they should be looking at the handicaps with them and running them off nearly top weight. Put a jockey on that can take seven off then. Um, but, you know, they've got the win into Goshen. Uh, where does he go next? Don't know. I know Jamie Moore said um, he's just got to go right-handed. So that rules out Aintree. That rules out Cheltenham. That rules out Ayr. Um, I think you'll see him back at Sandown at Ascot. There'll be the races for him. Could see him in two weeks' time in the Kingwell, um, possibly, after winning it so impressively last year. You know, they're the sort of races that I think you could go and keep winning with Goshen. And then as soon as he takes... It goes to Cheltenham and Aintree. Well, I don't think he'll go to Cheltenham and Aintree at all. Moving on to the Irish Arkle. Um, Blue Lord won the race, and on the day, I think Revere de Tell was the better horse at the weights. Um, made a complete mess of the last, then ran on strongly. I don't. I think the steward's inquiry was correct. Um, whilst Blue Lord came across Revere de Tell, that was before Revere de Tell had got going again. Revere de Tell then got going and um, didn't quite get back up. The horse I'm interested in from this, so I'm not a fan of the Arco at all at the Cheltenham Festival. I don't think it's doesn't look a strong event and there's nothing there that I'm that interested in. Um, the one I am possibly interested in is Saint Sam. Um, just want to see if they give him a handicap mark after that, and if they do, what it what it is. See, he finished second in this at this festival last year, before going and finishing second at the Chapman Festival in the Boodles Juvenile. Now, obviously, St. Sam, there is no novice uh, event for handicappers over two mile, but maybe the Grand Annual could be looked at. Um, I felt he went slightly too hard, take it, trying to take on Blue Lord and Revere to tell. Yeah, the Grand Annual could be interesting if he gets a mark off the back of that run. Um, if not, maybe they could find a, a beginner's chase somewhere quickly for him. Um, and get a handicap mark. In terms of the Arkle, Revue de Tell shortened, but you've got to remember she won't get the mayor's allowance um, or as much of allowance at the Channel Festival. I mean, Blue Lord would finish third or fourth fit or fifth in a decent Arkle. Same for Edward Stone, same for Third Time Lucky. I'm really not interested in the, the race as a whole. Yeah, nothing catches me eye other than those as well. Um, so that could be a race that I end up not having a bet, having backed, appreciate it, and Mon Morale for that. They're both not going to turn up. The 220, the City Isles at Sandown, was won very impressively by Lom Press. Um, Mr. Coffee ran on for second after initially, with about three to jump or four to jump, looking like he might end up finishing four for four. The fugitive came past and then he started running on again. I think that demonstrates. He wants a two and a half, but he's, he needs a handicap at the moment. I'm hoping he runs in the Paddy Power still. Um, did they move his price at all? Where is he? Uh, Cook. 
can't find it. There he is. No move in his in his price. I think that's where he'll end up. Um, the winner is going to run in the turn of novices and was shortened. You know, fours, fives, potentially could have Bob Ollinger and, and Gallop and Deschamps to beat. That would be a, a real challenge. Um, but I'm hoping that the handicapper leaves Mr. Coffee alone and he runs in the Paddy Power Plate. Pick Dory, maybe, maybe try to take on a horse that is just much better than him and could be uh, better suited when he, he when he's the best horse in the race. Um, but my, my main talking point here is I'm hoping that Mr. Coffey, the handicapper, leaves him alone. The Towton, or Toy Town, I think it's the Towton, isn't it? The Towton Novices Chase at Weatherby. A hoisting I was very impressed with that. Um, I thought... Turning into the straight, they were all roughly about uh, about with him, and I was a little bit uh, concerned. I'm thinking this isn't an RSA performance yet. I think he jumped the third last, and the the acceleration from the third last to the second last was very impressive. Pulled away, then over jumped the second last because he was still full of running. Jumped the last fine and, and won really impressively. Um, he did shorten for the festival novices. You can see he he went down to. You know, short was nine to two in places, and you can get sixes at the, the biggest. If Gallop and Deschamps doesn't go there, I think a Hoisinor can reverse the form with Brave Man's game. Um, I think that's not a bad price still. In terms of the Gold Cup, obviously he was shortened for the Gold Cup as well. You can see twenty fives. The, the the Gold Cup could be a bit of a mess in terms of who could turn up there, and all the horses are kind of beating each other. I'm hoping they don't jump the gun and go there um because we've got a better price obviously for the uh, three mile novice event moving on to the three mile handicap at leopardstown now dumboyne was disappointing finished 13th and is currently rated 128 now in terms of the potemps final i don't think he's going to get in i think he might drop here last year or well, the last few years, the bottom weight has been rated 126, 131, 134, and 135 in the uh, Potemps final. Even with the uh, uh, Irish um, penalty that they seem to get, they seem to get a higher mark. I don't think he's going to get in, and that would rule him out of the Potemps final. The horse who did kind of catch my eye for the Potemps final in this race was Dallas to Picton again. Now, he's finished even worse. He's finished 14th. Watch him from the top of the straight, though. He goes from travelling really well. He turned into the straight. Look, I thought he was going to go and win the race. And then found nothing. But was that the plan? You know, he's going to drop a few pounds. He was currently rated 139. He could drop two, three, four pounds and still get in. And if he drops two, three, four pounds and runs in the Potemps final, I think it'd be very, very interesting because we know he's got the Cheltenham Festival form. He's finished second and fifth in uh, Martin Pipes. I don't think the trip is the issue. I think he was just ridden a bit too far forward. Um, drop him into mid-division next time in the Potemps final, and I think it would go very close. The Potemps final was also a race that caught my eye for one in the uh, Grade 3 at Sandown, and it's if the cat fits. I know we're getting stuck on uh, if the cat fits a bit, He's finished fifth here. He could drop. He was rated 142 coming into this um, with a seven pound claimer. Now, if you actually watch him from the top of the straight, I thought the jockey was going to was giving up and was going to pull up. And yet he's managed to run past, run past a lot of these um, in the final, even after the last, really. Cheltenham will suit. The lightly stronger pace will suit. If he drops £2, £3, I think it'd be very, very interesting. Put Ben Bromley back on at Cheltenham, and I think he's got a great chance, personally. Um, yeah, he's stayed on so well that he's really caught my eye. The best traveller in the race for me was Call Me Lord, um, but probably didn't get home and made a mistake two out, which, which cost him all momentum. He was just starting to get involved here. Um, when he made a bit of a mess of the second last, and that really, really hurt his chance, especially as being a doubtful stayer. Where can he go? Well, it's obvious. He finished fifth last year 
here at Aintree in the Grade 1, drop him to two and a half mile, go to the handicap, if the uh, Call Me Lord, I think, would run a really big race there. In terms of the winner, it was Green Book. It was good and bad news for me. Annoying because I didn't back him. Look at this. Back in October 2019, highlighted Green Book. Been purchased for fifty uh, 65000 Looks a great buy. He's since won a Chester Plate uh, on the flat and now a uh, handicap hurdle over hurdles at Sandown. The people that I gave that uh, advice to, to buy Green Book, didn't buy him. Moving on to the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup. Conflated won it. I think that's a great run from Manila Indo. Manila Indo ran in this race last year. And this was it here. He finished fourth of five, comfortably beaten, not running a great figure. Look what he ran next time. Massive figure at Cheltenham winning the Gold Cup. We know he likes Cheltenham. He's never won at Leopardstown. Um, I thought that was a great run from Manila Indo. I was gonna. I said top five finish, and I'd be pleased. He's finished second. I think he goes and wins the Gold Cup now. He did shorten in price a little bit, down to fours and fives and sixes. Um, I think we're on at tens, maybe. Um, yeah, I thought that was a perfectly respectable run for Manila Indo, who should be bang there now. Bang ready for Cheltenham Festival. Two more. Um, the two horses that I felt were worth taking on in the Edinburgh National because they surely didn't want to win a 26th Grand Race when they had both Scottish National and uh, Grand National targets. Highland Hunter and Mighty Thunder, and they both, you know, one finished fourth, one pulled up. We were disappointed, a little bit disappointed that the Wolf didn't beat Captain Catastop. He's run a great race. Um, and well done to Fergal O'Brien, I guess. Final race, Fasal Vega. Wow. I think that's all you need to say. Wow. Has shortened to 10 to 11 in places, 4 to 5. You can get 5 to 4 about Fasal Vega to win the bumper. Honestly, I know we're on Bonte in the bumper at uh, a big price. Fasal Vega is the one to beat, without a doubt. I mean, the horses behind, Sandok Lagani, the Big Diana, and it's what United had run really good figures. Fasal Vega made them look moderate. Um, I think the last few winners of this race have been Kill Cruet, finished second at the festival. Appreciate it, finished second at the festival. Black Bow, finished fifth at the festival. Envoy Len won at the festival. It's a race that does work out. I know people say, oh, Willie Mullins, the winners haven't won at the festival. They finished, two of them have finished second. Um, to his own horses as well. You know, uh, he was second with Kilcruet to Sir Gerhard. He was second with, appreciate it, to Fernie Hollow. What else has he got? If nothing, Vassal Vega wins. And I think Vassal Vega wins the bumper anyway. Um, yeah, so there's some thoughts. I was, I'm not too disappointed with Vauban. Uh, Fieldor, sorry. I was delighted with Dolos, obviously. Um, I'd like to see what Mark St. Sam gets, if he gets a mark. Uh, hopefully Mr. Coffee doesn't move in his handicap mark. A hoist and earl is very impressive. I was very pleased with that. Dallas to picked on is definitely interesting for the um, Potemps final. Call me Lord to Aintree. If the cat fits to the Potemps final. Uh, Manila Indo to the Gold Cup. Really impressed with that. Uh, happy with that. And Fasel Vega wins the champion bumper. So there's some thoughts for Saturday's review.